I'm not sure exactly how we went this direction, but it seems like we've been covering a lot of cooking videos lately, and I promise I will talk about other stuff again. But I desperately needed to show this to somebody else. I know about the channels like Kay and Jack, and I laugh and have a good time with them. But then there are some cooking videos on YouTube that are just, I don't know if it's, they're funny or absolutely horrifying. And not horrifying is in the, haha, Jack makes abominations against food. Horrifying is in like, this feels like it was made by a serial killer. I came across this channel a few years ago and it took me for ever to find it again. I don't know if this is the, like, official channel of it, but it's a smaller channel with the username Paul4608. On this channel, you can find a variety of recipes, and some of them were posted a year or two ago, but all of a sudden it jumps into an eight or nine year ago publishing period. Now, what makes the channel stand out among Kay and Jack and other amateur or mediocre chefs on the website is, I guess you'd call it the aesthetic. Every video, as far as I can discern, is filmed on actual VHS tapes and then digitized. So you may think, oh, okay, well, these are just, you know, old home videos that this guy made and decided to upload to his channel. But none of the videos from what I've seen have time stamps on them. The date and time is always blank in the bottom right hand corner. So as far as I know, these were recorded on VHS to be uploaded. Uh, that has to be what happened because I don't see any reason why some guy would make 157 home videos of him just cooking things for himself. But it's not just the VHS that makes it feel off. It's, I would guess his name is Paul, so Paul himself, who looks like Fungus from Monsters, Inc. when the Scream Extractor is done with him. Oh, and he is British as well, so that'll probably, you know definitely help our perception of his food. The video I want to look at right now is the first one that I ever found from him, and probably the most agree- it makes Jack's videos look like MasterChef in comparison. Unlike Jack, this guy does not assert to be some professional chef or pro-home chef or whatever Jack wants to call himself now, so that I'll be more lenient on. It seems like he's just doing it for fun, but some of the stuff you'll see is still just so bizarre that I have to talk about it. So let's just jump right into barbecue burgers. Oh, two things before we begin. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We finally passed 500 subs, but now we're on that road to 1,000. And for whatever reason, all the videos on this channel have audio only in the left channel. I'll fudge around and see if I can make it mono, but if I can't for the video, I apologize. Video, I showed you how to make a barbecue using no money. This time I thought, why not make your own burgers? There's no better than making your own burgers at a barbecue. So let's give it a go. You see what I'm saying about the serial killer home video aesthetic here? If it was recorded digitally, it would not feel this way, but the ex Explicit fact that it is filmed on VHS with no timestamp in the corner. I feel like I'm about to see something I should not. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, <clears throat> make turkey burgers. First thing you need is um, a pack of this stuff. It's um, beef and pork mince. I'm pretty sure he said he was making turkey burgers, so why use beef and pork ground beef, or mincemeat, as they call it? I wonder if this guy knows K. People in the UK know each other, right? That's a thing you guys do? You also need an onion for this. Uh, there's 500 grams here, so I'm only going to use half that. You can probably get a few burgers out of this. I'd assume you could get a few burgers out of 500 grams of ground beef. That's a little over a pound of ground beef. So, yeah, I'd hope you could get a few burgers out of it. Oh, whoa. 
if I fix the audio, you guys won't be able to tell this, but there was just like static in the right channel. No dialogue or anything, but just a brief, not even second long flicker of static. Yeah, you can probably get a few burgers out of that. I'm going to finish recording this and then in seven days there's going to be a ghost crawling out of my monitor. Hey, it is. First of all, to scrunch it up like that. Get it nice and scrunched like that. I really don't like how when he's running it through his fingers, it sounds like sand. Plane, go away. Half a, to half a teaspoon of olive oil. Uh, one half a tablespoon of olive oil or one tablespoon to um, 500 grams of turkey mince. So I went back and checked just to make sure. Yeah, it's definitely beef and pork ground mince that he's using. I don't know why he keeps insisting that it's a turkey burger unless he thinks that a turkey burger is a style. Maybe I'm just completely mishearing the word and he's not even saying turkey. That aside, I don't think he has a recipe here and is just winging it because, I mean, he clearly didn't know the amount of olive oil he was going to put in there. I... Plane, go away. He clearly didn't know the amount of olive oil he was going to put in there, or he misread it, but I definitely think it was the first part. I swear to God, planes. So you get a nice, um, stiff consistency. So you can... Mold your burger. So he claims that he's putting the olive oil in the meat to make it sticky. And I guess that might work to a certain point. But then if you keep adding olive oil into it, it's just going to get liquidy and looser, would it not? There's no um, add and fast drill to how much of this stuff you actually add. I genuinely have no idea what he said there. There's no add... Something, 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 something you actually add. I have no idea. Next thing is to, um, peel an onion. It's not my favourite job, peeling onions. Just take the skin off it. You still can't convince me that this guy has not murdered at least three people. Look at how he handled that knife when peeling off the skin of the onion, breaking it open to get to what's underneath. He knew what he was doing there. He might not be a good cook, but he has knife skills. At least knife skills when it comes to getting under the skin. Planes! What is with these planes tonight? I feel like 90% of this video is going to be me cutting out waiting for planes. Once you've uh, got all out of skin off your onion and topped and tailed it. <laughs> Hold on. I just <laughs> need a moment after that. <laughs> Can we see that all again? And topped and tailed it. <laughs> that whole chain of events that happened there is you cannot script that him picking up the onion the plate falling into i'd assume it's his barbecue pit the lens of the camera you can audibly hear freaking out before we get some beeping error message from it it's just cosmic comedy in action. Oh, that could have been a lot worse than what happened. Paul, please cut your onions on a... Well, you're cutting it on a flat surface, but please cut them on a flat, steady surface that's not going to fall when you put pressure on top of it. That... Gave me genuine fear. 
In all my days of working with a kitchen and doing food prep for jobs, I have never seen somebody cut an onion that viscerally. He cuts it down about halfway and then rips it open with his bare hands. You can see the splintering on the inside layers from where it's uneven because it didn't get cut, it just got torn apart. So just part your onion to peel it. You don't want a lot of onion for this, you don't want uh, an entire onion. Please, whoever's up there, please tell me that he's going to cut these into smaller pieces and we're not going to have onion petals sitting in the ground beef. No! Mm. Then just sprinkle your onion on your bar, on your uh, in sea mints. Make sure you get small pieces, you don't want them too big. Is this a European or British thing? Because Kay does this too, where she doesn't cut up her onions all the way. She doesn't dice them or mince them. She just cuts them into like smaller little like petals and then throws them into her food. <laughs> Maybe it's a regional thing. Otherwise, that means there are at least two people on this planet that just throw in chunks of onion without properly cutting them into their dishes. And I am scared to run into somebody else that cooks like that in my personal life and accidentally eat something like that. Because if there are two of them, there are more. <laughs> My guy, that is not mixed in. Those onions are as incorporated as they were when you just threw them in the bowl. There's a reason why people cut their onions and their garlic vegetables that they put into ground meat or mixes into very small pieces so it can better incorporate in there and not have chunks of onions sticking out of the side of my ground beef. Note to self, never record on a Wednesday again because that seems to be the day that the planes like to have a field trip. That smells really nice, does this? Should come out really well. I think them onion pieces are so big. Trying to fold them into a mixture. I was gonna say something about him saying he wanted to fold the onion pieces in the mixture because they're too big. Planes. I was going to say something about him uh, saying he was going to fold the onion into the mixture to better incorporate it because the pieces were too big, but then I got audibly jump scared by the squelching sound of him mixing, jumping into both channels. I was so used to the dead silence on the right side and just hearing him talk and everything in the left side, and then all of a sudden, all I hear from the right side is, and that's it. And you want to transfer a lot to a play. Did his battery run out? Did he run out of tape? Transfer a lot to a plate. And you can start moulding your burger. Did he just take all of the meat mixture that was in the bowl and put it on the plate and is forming that into one burger? My guy, that is a one pound burger patty. And let's put that in the oven and, uh, well, actually I'm going to fire barbecue up and um, see how it does. Now, <laughs> yes, the previous stuff has been very odd, some of it funny, some of it white-knuckle terrifying. This is where it truly gets interesting. To kick a barbecue off to get it lit, 
it's not an easy task um, but you can make short work of it if you use smell plus fuel and on my last demonstration I used petrol which is not a good idea he said that he used petrol or gas for a car to light his barbecue pit in the past but he says he's found a safer quicker alternative if you didn't catch that yeah i think it needs a bit of a booster to get it started an alternative to using petrol a bit of a safer alternative is to use um, a bit of deodorant Yes, you saw right. This man, this at least 40-year-old human being used aerosol spray deodorant to coat his charcoal briquettes to light on fire for his cooking pit. I don't know how old a lot of my demographic is, but I can say with almost utmost certainty that most of you at home know what happens when fire comes into contact with aerosol products, be it deodorant or bug spray or hairspray or whatever. But in case you don't know... Wait till the mist's gone. And we'll try and flame it up from that. Give it a couple of seconds. Oh. Unfortunately, that's where we'll have to end for today, as the video ends with his one-pound burger sitting over a barely-on-fire fire pit. So, we can all assume at the end of the day that this burger was not cooked properly, and Paul probably burned at least one layer of skin off his hand. With that, that's gonna do it for this video, folks. Please make sure to leave a comment and subscribe. Let me know down below any channels you want me to cover, or if you want to see more of this, or any particular videos that you want me to take a look at as well. As always, thanks y'all for supporting and sticking around, and I hope to see you next time. See ya!